welcome back to Stagiaire. Today we have Diego Crescieri from Creative Works with us. So Diego, can you present your company, what you do? Of course. Ciao Anita, thank you for having me today. So yeah, I represent Creative Works. We are a language service provider. Uh, simply said, we offer translation services. Uh, but not, all, not only that, we do offer also localization, transcreation, subtitling, many different services. And lately we've started offering other services as well that if you want follow more, uh, they fall more in the communication agency sphere, uh, SEO, copywriting, and all these kind of services that are not strictly related to going from one language to another. And we are a young company. Uh, we've been founded four years ago and we had our birthday last Saturday, actually. So it's four years. Uh, we are quite young. We have a team of 15 people. Uh, we believe a lot in training and I'm, my vision is to, to help as, as much as I can young people to enter the market, which is quite difficult because uh, there are many, many students and the industry is really growing, but there's a clear uh, knowledge gap between the academia, if you want, and the real world. So that's what Absolutely. I really care about. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, any languages that you specialize on? Oh, we, 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 we've been offering in translation into and from Italian mainly, but then customers have asked to, to offer more languages and We've been growing a lot in many different languages and we have a lot of partnerships and people all over the world. So we basically offer all languages, even great. rare languages as well. Okay, great. So um, uh, do you hire interns? Of course, of course we do. Uh, I think this year we had uh, 22 internships in our company, which is really a lot. Wow. And we do hire them. I think it's really a win-win situation uh, for us, for the company, and for the students as well. Um, they are a really a great opportunity for them to learn uh, and understand which role they can play in the industry because it's really, there are different roles in the industry. And again, in the academia, you really don't know what you can do after you take your graduation and so on. So uh, the internship is an opportunity for them to understand what role they can play in the industry. Uh, and for me, it's a really good way to, to, to understand people, to know them really. Because, you know, the trial period that you have when you hire someone is really not enough to really understand people. So I think half of the team is coming from internships. Wow, that's great. Really um, that. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's amazing. So which kind of background has your ideal intern? Well, of course, it depends on the role. Uh, there are some roles for which we, uh, we have certifications for language services. So for some roles, we need to hire people that have a given number of years of experience or they, they've done given studies, uh, but that's not necessary for, for everything, for every role. Of course, they need to understand English because that's the communication language and they need to have technical skills. Uh, for instance, they need to know how to work with the translation systems because we use softwares for that. Um, so I, I would say that that's the technical stuff that they need to know. Uh, so when we, they at least should have the theory about these systems, unfortunately that's not something they work on at the university. So uh, for that we do trainings, uh, but okay. those are the skills, yeah. So which kind of programs do you use? Uh, they are called uh, computer aided translation systems. Uh, they're basically softwares that, that help you translating. They don't suggest the translation itself, but they're basically database where, where you save your translations and you can leverage the translations for a subsequent project and, and so on. So you can do terminology searches and it's, they're called translation aided uh, computer aided university doesn't provide students with any knowledge of this program that's really the, strange the, the, that's weird absolutely because they've been around for 20 years so that's really weird uh one of the reasons they told me uh, they tell me is that they are too expensive 
but that's changing because uh, many programs are now not not license based anymore so they are based on the cloud and they are not expensive at all or they are even free so that's not an excuse anymore but it takes time to to have them understand this okay but yeah they basically gives really basic theory on those systems okay. and then you have new systems every time so it's not that's cannot, great uh, that's great that you do some uh, some training however so that it's a good point for the students so they don't have to worry about that if you do the training and, and and teach them how to use the program so in, yeah, our programs are really hands on so we do really hands on training they start that's really important one yeah absolutely so in terms of soft skills which soft skills are valued the most in your sector well, uh, as I think in many, many industries, uh, there are roles today, there are jobs today that will not exist in five years. Uh, so what I look the most in, in terms is the uh, flexibility and the willingness to learn the new things and new technologies and so on. Um, the ability to work by objectives, that really, that's really important and not to, give, to be given for granted, absolutely. Uh, and then, of course, we, we deal with languages and uh, we, they need to have communication skills, uh, great team playing skills. But I would say that flexibility and willingness to learn every single day is the most important one. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So do you also provide virtual internships since the situation with COVID is not helping? <laughs> also languages, I believe that you might be used to have virtual interns as well because if you're working with people who has knowledge of different languages they might be i i guess um they might be living in another country or or, or moving around so do you provide virtual internships well, we we never provide any virtual internship before this year uh because my my, my thought was that uh, the most value, you could get the most value from a in-house experience. But of course, we needed to adapt. And the, the internships I was mentioning before were not all done in-house because of uh, the regulations that we have now, the restrictions. And yeah, we do now provide virtual internships to answer the question. So we adapted to the new situation. Uh, we do offer mostly translation income from Italian. So it's basically around the area, let's say. Uh, but we are we are growing other languages, so we are looking to providing more internships, and I would say worldwide, uh, if it's not too ambitious. But yeah. Uh, okay. Really so my next question was, if you have ever had interns from abroad, but I guess it's a no, <laughs> maybe. It's a no, but it will be a yes very soon, I think, <laughs> uh, because I think, and, and this. Uh, imagine at the, at, in the first year, I only accepted the internship from Genoa, which is where we are based. But then I understood that if you limit yourself to, to the area or even the country, then you have clear limitations of the potential candidates that you can involve. And so we are really looking to have in, international internships as well. I think that's, that's the next move. That we're That's great. So then, then stagiaire comes in hand for that. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I love the idea. Absolutely. Good, good, good. Okay. So, are your internship paid, and how long they last? And if so, you have or also if you offer any kind of benefits to the student. Oh, hey. so let me answer the payment question. Uh, it depends on the length of the internships. Uh, for some internships, you need to pay interns by law. I mean, you, you need to pay them, and we do, of course, pay them. Uh, and those are the ones that you take after you have graduated. Uh, so the extracurricular internship. Yeah, basically. exactly. And for the curricular ones, they are shorter. Shorter, they last. They could last from one month to three months, more or less, depend, depending on the university. And you don't need to pay them. Uh, we give them a sort of pocket money, uh, usually, and but I think the, the biggest benefit is we give them access to a huge, huge database of training opportunities to our external consultants as well. So a, a lot of free trainings, free materials that they can get and, and study and 
and learn new things, uh, books. Uh, uh, we, we've done some interesting internships where we, we have translated books uh, as a part of the internship program. So the benefit is to have their name on the cover of the book and that's the greatest satisfaction that you can get, I guess, as a starting translation, translator. Uh, so it's not always about money but it's also about money, of course. So it's a mixture of the both. Okay, okay. And um, okay, so if any interns are interested in sending you the resume, can they do it? So can you give us your email? Yes, they can do it, of course. I won't give you uh, our email. We have uh, internships at creativewords.com, but that's gonna change very soon because we are going to launch our new website soon and uh, we are preparing a nice uh, form where the where interns can like send their application. So the, the email is not going to work in, uh, shortly. Okay. It's not going to be working. But yeah, we, we do have many agreements with many universities and uh, in Italy, for instance, you need to sign like, I don't know, convention. I don't know if that's the, the right word. Uh, but yeah, the, they can absolutely send as uh, applications, absolutely. And we have a dedicated person to take care of that because it, it's, you know, to manage more than 20 internships is, is a job by itself. That's a lot, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have a dedicated person and okay. we will have a dedicated page on our new website. Great. So anything else you would like to share with us about your company? Uh, well, not about my company. I don't have anything to, to add. Uh, but I want to stress that I think the internships are a real opportunity for, for the students and the, they are, I think, the strongest bridge from the academia to the, to the, like, to the industry, you know, to the real world, let's say. And I think that's the, the if you want the easiest move, I mean, this move, not, it's not easy to find companies, uh, though, that are available and willing to offer internships, but if you find one, uh, just go for it. Uh, at the same time, I have uh, heard many interns complaining about companies just uh, not offering anything, any training. Uh, so I would uh, advise any intern that finds himself or herself in, in such a company just to go away, to leave that intern and internship and look for something else. Because it's sad when you have to when you do photocopies or uh, any yeah. trivial task that is not related to what you studied for. But there are many sad stories about this. So yeah, I'm really looking to change in that. Yeah, that's why Sejer has born. We hope that we could help also students to get really meaningful internship and not something like photocopying or a waste of time at the end. Um, yeah, I absolutely. have one I have one last question. Okay, so, I um, would like to know uh, if a university student is studying a translator and uh, translating um, degree more related to books so translating books or translating in congress which one do you prefer so between translating in congress you mean interpreting right interpreting like, yes exactly do you prefer interpreting or translating which which of the one of the, these two degrees because i don't know in italy how does it work but in the uk you have two different degrees completely separate one <laughs> so which one is more uh, interesting for a company like yourself so which of the two degrees offer more um knowledge to the to the students and and they're more prepared which one do you think is more interesting yeah, but it, that's a nice question. I, in Italy, unfortunately, uh, there are not like separate courses anymore. They used to be when I was young, <laughs> when I studied. I studied interpreting, in fact. Okay. Uh, and now they're kind of overlapping. So it's a unique course with some classes of, of interpretation and, and translation. Uh, as a company, we do mostly translations, like written ones. So technical stuff, not, not even books, actually. Uh, so we don't do interpreting, but there, there's a big, big market in interpretation as well. Uh, and now we're virtual interpreting systems as well. So, the, you know, many, many events have been canceled. So inside interpretation is, is like decreasing. Uh, but I think they are really different jobs. 
I, I don't trust that much the interpreters that do translations in their, in their free time and vice versa because it's really two different specializations. So uh, this doesn't answer your question. For our company, it's mostly translation. So we can translation. Okay, and what about documents? Because I guess that you uh, you translate legal documents as well. So uh, yeah. people from uh, low degrees are welcome as well in translating or not really? Oh, that's another nice question. Um, well, let's say that uh, you need to, in order to translate in a, in a good way, you need to also know some techniques. You need to know the technology. Uh, you need to know uh, how to translate. So um, I think that it's really good to find a, a lawyer that has turned himself or herself into a translator. It's something that happens. Uh, for, for the medical industry, for instance, it's good to have doctors that have a deep knowledge of the subject matter and they can translate. But still, I think that in order to become a translator, uh, even if you know the language, the source and target language in a very good way, you need to learn the skills as well, the, the technical skills to, to translate. It's not like to be taken for granted. Okay. So yeah, they are welcome to translate, but they need to, to learn a little bit. Um, this question just arrived to me because I thought, I mean, if you're studying translating, you're studying how to translate, but maybe then you have to uh, develop a spe speciality, you have to yeah. to, to be uh, inserted in some kind of uh, sector because it's kind of impossible to know everything. I mean, of course. If, if, to know medicine, law, engineering, everything, it's impossible. So you might be having to decide whether you want to go into a specific field of translation. Yeah. And usually do you do that at university or do you do that in your job? I, I mean, like, do you some... help students? Uh, did it happen to you that some students had a particular uh, field that interested them and then they specialize on this field with yourself, with a job that they choose to uh, do? It, it can happen. Uh, at some universities, they offer like technical translation courses or medical translation courses, sometimes legal translation courses. So basically, when they start, they tend to, to focus on those industries. Uh, uh, but my suggestion would be follow your passions. I mean, I, I know very good uh, video game translators that are video gamers in their life. So, and they're really good at it because they know the subject matter very well. Uh, it's not impossible to, to take a specialization after graduating in translation though. I mean, you can take a legal course or you can take a medical course. For medical, for instance, you cannot just know all sorts of medicine and practices and, and subject matters. So you need to specialize in some of them. And then we could open a huge discussion about if it's better to be generalist and do everything or specialize. Um, I think finding your niche is really important to, to market yourself and to, to distinguish yourself from, from the huge number of translators that are present on the market. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for this, for replying to all my questions. I hope, it guys, that you will enjoy this interview. Remember to subscribe to www.stagiaire.com if you would like to find your internship in Italy or abroad. And see you next time. Thank you, Diego, for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Inka. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.